Well, some folks online were interested in my cob oven. They made a traditional cob oven, which is a big dome that you have to fill it with lots and lots of wood to heat up the thermal mass of it. And then you can use all that heat radiating back in to bake a whole bunch of bread all day or half the day, really. I don't like those designs because they're not for continual use and uh, they use a lot of wood way too much wood i just don't like the design i know they're traditional they look cool everybody around here has them i've sent people to a bread baking class and they have a really fun time doing that but i wanted a better design so i had an idea and I built at a different location the first one, the first test one, and it does work. But I have learned don't build your first model in the best place because you're going to make changes. And I did. Our second one we built, I actually had a local guy build it, and he built it the way he wanted it to. And it had a bunch of design flaws that we're going to avoid in this design that I'm going to show you. This one's pretty good. Maybe at the end of this video, I'll try and critique it and see. Well, actually, I'll do it as we go along. I'll critique it and say what I would do differently. Okay, first of all, it's not pure cob. I use barrels inside of it, and the cob provides insulation for it and, and an outer earth structure. So it's not really a cob oven entirely. That's okay. Barrels are cheap. Lots of stuff gets shipped in food grade barrels, and so there's no toxicity to them, and it's just fine. And you can see the basic structure here is that there's a fire box down here where you can put fire inside. And then over here, there's a spot where there's a barrel um, that, that you can put food into, right? You can put uh, bread or trays of stuff or turkey or whatever you're cooking. And here's my oven thermometer. This section I've been used in a while because I've been alone in the woods a long time and there's no reason to fire it up. I'm not, I'm not baking. <coughs> so, there's actually two barrels here. This is the inner barrel and the outer barrel. The inner barrel is a smaller kind of barrel. Uh, I think around here you, they ship uh, orange concentrate in them, orange juice concentrate or something. And the other one's a 55-gallon drum. So rather than get too complex about cutting things certain ways, I just bought one smaller barrel and one bigger barrel. There was still some cutting, but there was no welding. I really like to keep it simple. The one that the local guy built up there needed welding on it, and this one could be improved with, with a few welding dings. But in this case, I've just got a piece of sheet metal in here, and the bottom of it, there's nothing in there. Um, I could do a couple layers with spacers and I could have it be so you could put trays in it. It really kind of depends. So you could configure the interior of this barrel any way you want. My door is stupid. It's made out of wood. And if you control the fire correctly at the right temperature, that's okay. But uh, if, if, if somebody just loads that full of wood and it gets too hot, <coughs> the door actually burns. And this is a case where a metal door would probably be better. Somebody could weld up a a door that would, that would fit right on this really well, and there's probably a couple good designs on that. You can think those up yourself. But this does work. It doesn't even, <coughs> pardon me, uh, store all of the heat. But, uh, and I would like to have an external temperature monitor so that there was, a, a, you know, we could drill a hole and then have a thing that showed the temperature inside. That would be really stellar because then down here you could be adjusting the amount of wood that you put in. Now, one of my criticisms I do have is there's a, there's a stone wall here, so you have to go around there to fill in the, 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 uh, the, wood, the firewood. I don't like that. I'd rather just be able to walk over there and have a stack of firewood available, all nice and dry, and, and feed it in a really controlled way. With this method, you could heat it up very quickly and then run it all day using only the amount of firewood that you needed. So your total amount of firewood use would, would go... Uh, down and you would have great temperature control not as good as something with propane or something but really pretty darn good especially if you have relatively small firewood so you can just toss in pieces as you need to uh, there's a little shelf up here uh, this thing got so hot that this roof here caught on fire 
that was a problem. We, we had to replace it. Um, this does have some brick in here on top of some cob. So it's a mix, like there's a brick stack here and, and they're, they're not even cemented together. This is just cob in between them. So it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty sturdy though. It works out. Uh, what else? The kind of dirt I have here is, is really easy to use for cob. We do have some uh, strainers, like uh, mesh, wire mesh. <coughs> we actually built a thing that has bigger and then smaller and then smaller. So we can make as fine a dirt as we want. And then we can mix pine needles into that. This one, <coughs> yeah, this one has pine needles in it. But anyway, let's get to the barrels, okay? This is the, this is the key, most important part of why this design is awesome. Uh, the outer barrel is a 55 gallon drum and we actually cut a hole out of that and place the smaller drum within it. So the heat goes from the fire into the 55 gallon drum, not into the small drum, the small drum here, because that's another problem with the big dome ones is you get a lot of smoke in the oven with your bread. That could seem cool, but let's keep the smoke and heat separate from the food. I want a nice hygienic environment. Um, so, so in here, this barrel, I think in this case, we actually cut the barrel and then we spread it out a little bit, which doesn't seem like it would be needed to me. I think we should, I don't remember what we did actually, but we could just cut a strip out of it. And, and the, the key is that the chimney for the exit of the heat is on the lower side of the 55 gallon drum. That means all of the hottest air, and it has to travel to get there, right? You could figure out some routes on this and maybe the firebox could be right over here and we're channeling that over to a chimney that's on the other side, but down low. And that's because then the, the space between these two barrels is gonna, gonna heat up and retain the hottest of the air as opposed to the second one, which a local guy built, where the back of it has the chimney coming out of the top of the barrel. That's dumb. We want to trap that heat in, in between the two barrels, and that's the real innovation in this particular design. Uh, of course, you know, like I mentioned, a lot could be done better, but <coughs> it was done really well. We can also dismantle it completely. This is all just bricks and some mud. So, uh, we could always redo it if we wanted to, and I actually probably do. I should probably build another one right next to it that's built better and have both as examples and draw this up in CAD as well so that other people can critique it or they can adjust it to what they exactly want. The size of this is a little small, I suppose, but you know, that, that, that can handle the pizza just big around, and you could crank out pizzas all day. Pretty efficient. I hope you like that design. I'm not an expert. Um, you know, I just sketched it up and uh, I, I'm open to responses to this or if you've built a better one or please do copy this design. I don't own it. And uh, copy it, make a better one and a better video too. We'll all learn something. I will give you a little teaser and you can think about this for extra credit. Maybe you can get ahead of me and design it yourself is I want to use an evacuated tube solar hot water heater that, that uh, the, the hot water goes from down below, perhaps on a slope, up into a big oven and heats it all up. And then with no additional energy like wood at all, you could have this hot oven all day long, anytime it's sunny out, and a lot of thermal mass to it, so it keeps heating all the time, and you could use it all day long. You could do that with a fire assist, so it could actually, you, you could be using the solar when it, when it works, and then have a firebox where you can just add wood as needed to get it to just that right temperature. That'll be in another video, and I hope I can do that project someday, or maybe you'll beat me to it. Let's go.